Hey folks, I'm going to try to shoot part two of Russ and Tori Taft's Bell Buckle Weekend. And uh, hopefully I'm prepared this time. I got about halfway through last time and realized I'd, I had some work to do. Okay, Jake, come on. Um, so I left off Friday night and I'm going to pick up Saturday morning. Early Saturday morning. 5.30 a.m. early Saturday morning. Bell Buckle is an hour behind Louisville. And a lot of times I have to get up around 6.30. So, even though I was in a comfy bed with a comforter and everything, I, um, uh, I guess, I guess my body was just telling me it's time to wake up. But it's a Saturday. But I, I woke up. In fact, I woke up just a few minutes before my phone rang. And I guess I had forgotten to tell the people at work I'm on vacation and out of the state. So I answered the call took care of that and by that time I, I was wide awake and things got a little rough because um, I started you know Bell Buckle is such a, a quaint little town and I knew we would most of the afternoon would be going through antique shops and and that type of thing which is something that that my mother uh, would have liked um, but of course my mom passed back in February in case uh, you haven't been watching my videos that long um, she she had a a uh, stomach surgery uh, to, to alleviate some uh, reflux issues and it it ended badly. Well, it, there were complications that started piling up until, until finally we, we couldn't go any farther and I had to, <clears throat> had to make the call to uh, have her taken off uh, ventilator. So, last year, during October, I, um, I took some days off from work. I'm so glad I did. Um, and for five days, she she took me through four of the uh, oh, what do you call them? Uh, bargain. They're peddler peddlers mall. It's just these huge these huge. Um, buildings that are just it's aisle after aisle after aisle uh, flea market type uh, deal and she she drug me through four of them in five days and and uh, but you know I I think back and and uh, you know we would go to one of those maybe go out and have a bite to eat and all right, Jake. I don't know what you're doing, but um, we go out to have a bite to eat, and uh, she would say, "Tell me, yeah, you know, ask me if I'm having a good time," because she was, and you know. So that kind of. That, that that really made all of that worth it. Um, I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I <laughs> that I, I want to go through a peddler small <laughs> every day for a week, but um, you know if my mom's having a good time, I man that that I love that. So I uh, 
So, yeah, so my answer to her was yes. And uh, so we did that. On the, on the fifth day, we went to Danville, my, which is uh, my hometown, my, well, where I grew up. And um, we uh, put uh, flowers on my stepfather's uh, grave. And, you know, she's telling me the usual stuff that I'm not really trying to hear about uh, how when she passes, she'll be buried there and she gets a headstone just like his and, you know, all of that, of course, little did I know that six months later, all of that would be important. So, so being in Bell Buckle and thinking about all of that kind of, <clears throat> kind of got me in a spot where I was, I, I did some weeping and, uh, of course, my allergies were acting up, so my nose was... So I went and uh, took a shower and got dressed for the day, and then thought, well, let me try to sit back down and take a little nap, because it's so early, and fortunately, I was able to do that, get another hour, hour and a half. And, um... So then Dave and I got around and uh, and we went to the uh, to the banquet or what I'm not sure. I can't remember what they call it I guess I, I can look at it it was uh, banquet hall or uh, yeah banquet hall so that's where we went we picked up our uh, to register and we picked up our our little bags Russ Taft, Bell Buck, Russ and Tory Taft's Bell Buckle Weekend. Very cool. And that had a bunch of stuff in it, like itinerary and uh, a sheet with, no, uh, that was a map and uh, a little page with uh, discounts at all the different uh, stores and shops in town. Uh, very cool stuff. Uh, also got coffee cup and uh, there was a signed picture in it as well which is that's a very good picture of Russ so that's cool that'll go in a frame uh, let's see and we got our little badges for the weekend. Pretty cool. Mine, mine's a little rumpled. I guess um, it was raining when we left, and I guess the the water kind of put a little crinkle in it. But it's, it's still very good. Um, so we did that. And then we, uh, Dave and I, left there and started hitting the antique shops and and uh, saw some saw some cool stuff. Um, the, the next day, the poet laureate uh, Maggie, I can't remember her name, um, but she said, "Welcome to Bill Buckle, and we have everything that you want, and nothing that you need." <laughs> Which I thought was funny because uh, we saw a lot of stuff, um, and it was it was uh, it was cool. Uh, one of the things that I know in one shop we went into, we saw a Superman, and it was kind of unusual because it it had the uh, the colors of the of Superman's costume were dark, like they they are in Man of Steel. You know the post Nolan esque, post Nolan uh, 
DC movies. So, but it yet yeah, it clearly looked like a much older Superman. So I'm I'm not sure what was going on there. I'll try to put a picture of it in here for those who are curious. Um, went around, saw some more, a bunch of other stuff. Um, then we ran our stuff back to the house, um, picked up some other stuff, and, and headed off to uh, Russ and, and Tori Taft's house for a afternoon meet and greet and concert. So it kicked off with uh, Russ uh, singing from the porch and um, doing some doing some great tunes. I think uh, the one that really the song that that I really appreciated the most was uh, he did a cover of Larry Norman's "The Outlaw," and I love Norman. Norman is. For those who don't know, Norman Larry Norman is often considered the the father of Christian rock. Uh, the Outlaw is a great song. It's not one that I I can recall hearing Russ ever do before. Um, so that performance w was very good, and in between songs he would talk and. Um, must admit he kind of got me a little misty again because he was talking about how, how Bill Gaither had once told him something about um, if you meet someone and, and they've never hit the wall uh, just wait there's one coming and you know I had been thinking about that morning and, and feeling like this year this year I had really hit the wall. Uh, not the first time, but back in 2011 I lost my job. Uh, seven, I had worked for a homeless shelter for 17 years and uh, was laid off. And, and due to some circumstances with the law, I didn't have any, I found out I wasn't getting any uh, All of a sudden, I can't remember what they call it uh, when the government pays. It's uh, government pays you because you're out of work. Um, I can't. I can't remember. But apparently, they didn't pay into it, and so I didn't get paid anything. And there was, if it hadn't been for some dear Christian friends, I, I wouldn't have made it financially. Uh, unemployment insurance. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I didn't get, unemployment insurance. And so those were some pretty depressed times, but honestly, this year has been much rougher. Um. So, he, some of the things he said really spoke to me. Now, I should also say that there was a part where uh, he talked to us about making sure that we met people, uh, introduced ourselves, and that was important. And not just coincidental, I don't believe. Prior to going to uh, to Russ and Tori's for that afternoon concert, um, Dave and I had stopped in the cafe, and while we were there, I had noticed he was talking to some friends that he had seen, and I was sitting at the table, and I noticed a guy at the at the other table who had. I could see his his badge, and uh, so I knew he, why he was there, uh, and he had headphones in, and and unfortunately, I just a lot of times I, I get a little frustrated because I don't always act on on things that impulses that 
that I get, and I, I should have. Um, I should have invited him over to eat with Dave and myself, but I didn't do it. So then we went, and uh, when we che were checking out, he was right behind us, and um, and we were talking, and one of the first things he does is <laughs> pop off with a movie quote. And I'm thinking, well, <laughs> okay, God, are you really trying to tell me I should make friends with this guy? Because, I mean, that's, a, that's just as nerdy and right up my alley as it gets. And, uh, so, I didn't think too much about it until we left, and then he said that. And, uh, and then we went to the concert, and after the, the, the concert, uh, wrapped, and, and, you know, we're all milling around, it's meet and greet time, and, so I'm talking, uh, well, I introduced myself finally to today's friends, which I didn't do at the cafe either, um, uh, and those, those folks were, uh, Bruce Brown and, uh, his wife Mary, who were wonderful people, uh, and I realized after Dave told me who he was that, that I had read a lot of his articles. He used to contribute to, uh, write and, and edit for, uh, Contemporary Christian Music Magazine, which I've read a lot, so, um, so I was, went over and was, after it was all over and was talking to, uh, Bruce about some of the albums that he had, because he had brought covers for us to sign, not only did he have the cover for his vinyl copy of Under Their Influence, which I've I didn't even know it was pressed till earlier this year. He also had the one for the way home, and which I've kind of known about, and that'll be kind of one of the next grails as far as my Rust Half collection that I'll be chasing. Um, so while we're talking, then then these guys come up with a, this camera and and. Uh, want to interview Bruce, so I just kind of exited stage left and walked around, and then here's this gentleman again. So I introduced myself, and and, uh, and this guy's name's Andrew, and he's from uh, Ohio, and a cool dude, and um, glad to have met him, and, and glad that, that Russ encouraged that. And then I finally did something about it and stuck out my hand and and uh, and introduced myself. So that was good. Um, then Dave and I got in line to to talk to Russ and and uh, get him to sign get him to sign an album. I think we well we both each had an album for him to sign. Uh, that part didn't turn out quite so well. Uh, the album, uh, Dave, Dave took uh, his second album, Metals, and had him sign that. I took his first album because that's the album that I discovered. Um, my uh, youth pastor, when I was a teenager, Mike Osborne, had introduced me, but brought a tape on, on a trip, a youth choir trip, and I just wore it out. I couldn't believe this guy's voice was so good. And that was this album. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there's a white smudge right there. That was his signature before, I guess I was so excited and trying to, you know, you, you, You walk with someone's music for so long. I've been walking with this guy's music, living with this guy's music, breathing it in for, uh, well, since 1983. So what is that? 30, 34 years? Something of that nature? 
that's that's a long time and I guess there was so much to say in those few moments that um, I, so <laughs> I guess I just was excited and didn't think about how I put the album in there it's not a big deal uh, this album isn't that expensive I think I could probably get go on eBay and get another copy for eight eight bucks or so and I plan I hope to go back next year so if I really determine that I, I want that album signed it's I don't think it's going to be a problem um, and so we had a good talk I could sit there and listen to Russ talk talk about his experiences um, forever uh, and he he told some interesting uh, tidbits about to other fans as we were kind of standing in line. Um, he did grab my pass at one point, and he signed it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, yeah, and Dave and I had a few presents that we gave him, and. and he certainly seemed appreciative of those and 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 it was just a good moment and and we took a picture which I'll put in this video um, so we wrapped that up um, this video is starting to get toward the 21 minute mark so what I'm going to do right now is show you some albums that I picked up when Dave and I resumed our uh, our walk through uh, Bell Buckle, and um, so and then I'll end this this one here, and we'll have to do another part for Saturday. I could see this series going for for about three or four, maybe even five, but we'll let let's just go ahead and get to these albums. Um, They, they're all country. Uh, they had quite a bit of interesting stuff. But, you know, I tried to cherry pick, go through and look at the vinyl and actually pick albums that, that looked good without a bunch that, that looks like I can clean them and uh, actually spin them and listen to them. Um, this first one is the... Uh, The Ever-Loving Soul of Roy Clark. And apparently he has fallen in love with the 50-foot uh, woman. And uh, he will love her until she gets hungry and, and eats him in probably three bites. Um, but the, uh, the album is on... Uh, dot records and it's really not even that dirty and I don't see any major scuffs on it I think that will be a good one there is a sticker there is some ink on a sticker here but I think if I I use the, the goop I can get that off um, this next one I wish I had noticed uh, there's a couple little scuffs on the front picture. I wish I had almost swapped it out with because I saw two copies of this. Uh, yeah, or maybe I should have bought them both and then just Frankenstein. It's um, All Star Jamboree with Buck Owens. Um, there are the scuffs in the picture. It, apparently there are other people on here Pee Wee King and Brad Stewart Leon McAuffey Archie Campbell who I recognize uh, Cowboy Copas Hilo Brown a lot of people I don't know but it's on uh, Guest Star Records it looks pretty generic uh, but again 
uh, the vinyl looks like it can be cleaned and, and possibly play well. So, uh, then I picked up um, an Ernest Tubb record. Um, I've got All the Heartache I Can Handle by Ernest Tubb, the Texas Troubadour. And this album is on MCA. Gotta love, love that cover. And then I picked up Ernest Tubb, The Legend and the Legacy. And this is on Cache Records. It's a yellow label. Again, looks really good. Um, should be fine cleaning it up. Uh, okay. And finally, oh, wait a minute, this is a gatefold. I forgot to mention that. Great, great artwork on the inside. don't know if all these people are on it. You know what? I don't think that he did the music. I think this is a compilation album. I hadn't looked at it that close. Um, Johnny Cash, well that explains all the people in the <laughs> in the in the artwork. Because there's uh, Conway Twitty, Loretta Lynn, Willie Nelson, uh, looks like George Jones, Marty Robbins, um, Johnny Cash, Charlie Daniels. All right, well, that's pretty cool. I'll have to, uh, I can't wait to spend that now. Um, and then finally, I picked up this album, uh, Charlie Leuven. Uh, Lonesome is me. It's got a scuff here. I don't know if that might be. A, that's not a sticker. That's not going to be fixable. But it's it's minor. I wasn't going to leave this album for as little as I paid for it. It's on Capitol Records, and it looks really good. It'll, I'm hoping it'll clean up and play just perfect. And um, yeah. So those are the albums that I picked up. Um, from there, we stopped. Dave got some coffee uh, at the coffee shop, and um, it was a Russ Taft blend, uh, because apparently Russ is famous for not only drinking coffee, but spilling it all over the place, <laughs> which is why the blend was called, I, Oops, I Spilled My Coffee. Um, and then we went to the ice cream parlor, and I'll show you a picture of that as well. Uh, the uh, we had the rust half Sunday, and it was it was amazing. Two huge scoops of ice cream on a brownie, and chocolate sauce and syrup, and I'm telling you, it was it was great. Um, my only regret is that we didn't get burgers there because apparently they make some pretty good burgers so that'll be next year and we are now approaching the 30 minute mark so I'm going to call this part two and I will be back for part three which is Saturday night uh, probably won't shoot that till tomorrow and so but be looking for it uh, we will get through this weekend <laughs> I promise, and uh, I hope you all are are having a great uh, weekend or week or whenever you see this that you're doing well. So, God bless you, and see you soon. <laughs>